Ms. Nomer, I generally don't use e for pretty much day to day. Um, so when I do do it, I'm usually trying to either help somebody else or um, do something fancy or figure out a way that someone hasn't thought to do it, maybe in a different way. But um, one of the things I want to show you a couple of couple of things that are, are really, uh, I guess, valuable if you have. Uh, <coughs> Things that are not currently in the software, you want to integrate the data out of eCore or ePro into other applications or tie that data in with other applications. Uh, how many people have either on their staff or have access to programming type, and, and not necessarily you know super duper tech meetings, but programming staff of some nature can get access to that? Uh, maybe about, about half. Uh, this is the kind of stuff, I'm going to show you a few of the things that, that we've done um, and, uh, and kind of give you some uh, background on what's possible and then you guys can help me uh, tweak, tweak the passion on them for some additional functionality in some of this. Uh, some of it's fairly new uh, and as a result of actually prior conferences and prior, prior requests. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, is database copies. Uh, if you didn't know it, uh, eCore has the ability to, uh, they have a service wherein you can get a copy of your database on a daily basis. So as part of their normal backup routines, of course they're making backups of your, of your databases and uh, you can download those through a secure site if you want to uh, just have a backup copy of your data for whatever reason and or if you want to try to do some fancy things with your data. It's in a standardized SQL format, so it's, it's not anything, uh, you know, proprietary or encrypted or things like that. So it's very easy if you have someone even that just knows how to, you know, write crystal reports pretty good. Uh, they can utilize this information. Uh, and the database copy, the best thing for that is actually non-time sensitive information because like I said, you're getting it, say you downloaded it this morning, it's for yesterday, you know, and prior from a nightly backup. Uh, data analysis, any historical stuff, everything that's in ePro is in this database. So if you're wanting to look at whether it be scheduled type information, uh, employee type information, pay, uh, basically anything that's in ePro <coughs> will be in the database. Uh, if you've got someone there again that used good reports, the, uh, the tables are fairly uh, commonplace. I've got a screenshot here in just a second I'll show you, but I mean, there's tables like, you know, employees, you know, schedule, certifications, so forth and so on. So if you want to try to, uh, uh, you know, utilize this information in conjunction with maybe some other types of system, an HR type system, uh, a dispatch system, or, or other type of systems uh, mm -hmm. to write reports that, that kind of combine the information, uh, database copies is one way to do that. Uh, and if you wanted to, for some reason, create a copy of your database as it existed at a point in time, which is quarterly or yearly or, or monthly uh, for audit purposes, or just to kind of have that backup to where you can somehow load in at a, at a point in time, database copies is something else where you can uh, store that information that way. The API, uh, this is a, an API stands for uh, Application Programming Interface basically a web service where you can send, it, send in a query through um, web browser, web services, and it will pull information straight out of the database. So that information is real time as it exists at the time of the query. Uh, currently there's some limited amount of data. It doesn't include everything that's in the database. Uh, and there again, I'll show you here in some later slides what information is in there. Uh, but it can be valuable. Uh, and the fact that it's real time can, can lead to some interesting applications and I'll show you one that we use. Uh, there's no archival or anything like that. This tells you what's, you know, it pulls what's in there at that, at that point in time. But if you got a program or you've got an application where you want to process or display this with other data sources where it's real time, dashboards for instance, some of the things we were talking about earlier, uh, it does work uh, very well uh, to do that. There again, if you've got somebody that can, uh, got some programming experience and write some underlying code to kind of use and massage that data to combine it with other things. If you just want to do some crystal report type stuff, the database copy is the, is the uh, better case. So like I said again, uh, there we go. 
uh, it's a zip copy. Download it every day. Uh, depending upon the size of your database, usually the free version of SQL, you can you know, set up a separate SQL instance to be your eCore database locally. Uh, you can actually script that to where it can download, unzip the database, automatically restore it to your SQL instance. Uh, that whole process can be automated so that uh, you know, whoever's going to be running these reports or, or whatever that you're writing uh, don't, don't have to worry with all the kind of underlying details. And then of course with that, you know, once the database is restored, just your standard <coughs> reporting tools can be used to uh, run reports off that data. I don't know if you can see this very well, uh, but you notice here, schedule baseline, schedule catalog, schedule items, uh, sent message logs, ship pickups. There again, nothing super secretive about the naming conventions. It's pretty straightforward. In, in some of the limited things that I've done, it was very easy to find where the information was at. Pretty much anybody that's used to writing, you know, SQL type reports or crystal reports can probably uh, find that location very well, uh, very easily. I'm sure if you get stuck, uh, the guys and gals that you throw can point you in the right direction of where that, where that information is. Here again, just a simple query. Show us the uh, employee last name, uh, their PTO, the termination date. Uh, so that's just a sample query that that information came out of uh, copy of the database. We actually have one of our entities now in Florida that's going to be using the database copy part to they're working on a bonus program for if, if the people take so many people within a certain amount of time, they, you know, it's a point-based system. Uh, the dispatch software is not capturing it as finely as they wanted as far as this is what we're actually paying them versus what they were active in the CAD system. So they're writing reports now, uh, fixing to go live here shortly with uh, pulling the, the schedule information out of here to, uh, to do that bonus program. So that's just an example of some of the things that you can do with it. The API, currently there's four sets of information the API uh, that you can get from it. Uh, and there again, this is a fairly new uh, <coughs> feature, so I'm hoping that we can really kind of expand on this in the future. But even so, uh, employee information, schedules, punches, certification records. So, and I'll show you how this is used, but that information uh, will get returned to you in an XML format, which is the one of the more recent uh, query formats that's uh, that a lot of stuff is being done in now. So here's an example of how queries, in fact, you can actually, and I'll do this here in a second, you can type this in, in a browser. Uh, this here is getting the schedule list. Uh, you pass in your custom ID, password, a vendor key, you put a date range. Uh, and this would be the type of response you would get. This here is an actual response out of uh, our uh, database. It gives you the call center, duration, uh, earning code, employee ID, end time, their qualifications, start time, and the unit name. So, uh, and I'll show you here in a minute how I'm using this to build a dashboard. But you can also, this here will show you all schedules, which I just cut uh, a single schedule item out, but it will give you every schedule item between those dates. You can also pass it a field with an employee ID number, and it will give you all the schedule items for that particular employee through that date range. Uh, so there, there's other parameters there that, that you can use. So here's a practical example of the API. So what we've done is, uh, and this is a screenshot, and I'll show you the live version here in a second. Uh, we're an ambulance service, so one of the things that we track is transports. Uh, we have budgeted amount of transports, and we have, of course, what we really do. Uh, so this is our budget line, and we go into our, and that information is provided to us so we know every month what our, our budget number is, and we, we break that down, we end up getting a daily budget, budget line. And this is on like a rolling 30-day period here. And you'll see that the red is the actual transport. So we get data. The, the, uh, the query goes in and gets the information out of our dispatch system to find out you know, how many calls do we do for the day. And then we grab out of the EPRO using the get scheduled item API saying, hey, give me all the schedule items. 
And so I add up all the hours for all those schedule items for that day. And in this case, I divide them by 10 simply because the number would be, you know, 900 and something, and it would just scale the, the graph so it far out of effect that you'd really be able to see it. So I divide it by 10, which actually turns out to kind of correlate pretty closely to um, transports. Uh, but if you have specific values, like you talked about the UHU before, you could build some of those percentages in to how you wanted that to divide out so that if you were searching for a particular one, you could divide that. But uh, once I get to the live shot, I can show you how, when you hover over this, it'll tell you how many hours versus uh, how many trips. And of course, the, the goal here is you want as many trips done with as few hours as possible. Uh, this is real-time information that a manager, uh, operations supervisor, could see. They could see how they're doing on a daily basis. They don't have to wait until the job the week in the month in the pay period. If you notice here, the payroll information is missing from the last couple of days. Uh, I purposely don't include the last couple of days because I don't want, uh, you know, discrepancies are still getting fixed, you know, for the last minute corrections on the payroll, and I don't want that to skew, you know, the graph here the last uh, couple of days. And of course, I ran this particular one uh, this past weekend. <coughs> I think this this is supposed to be a live web control, but I don't think it works. So I'll uh, flip over to Internet Explorer. <coughs> so this is the uh, this is the screen. I'm going to refresh this. You'll see it actually just takes a few seconds and it actually goes out, like I said, to our CAD system uh, or, you know, to the ePro site, gets all the information, finds it, and then uses actually the uh, Google mapping system to actually, or the Google charts to do the, the charting and stuff on it. So it just refreshed everything. If you notice there again, I'm going to hover over, say, uh, this number here number was 60, we had 48 actual transports, and 49.4 if you just won't call that channel, I had 494 payroll hours uh, that day. Uh, this is broken down by area, uh, obviously you could break it down to ever how, uh, how you want it. What I did was I know the, uh, the call centers for each area, so I just, uh, the, the program just says you know, the call center in that original file showed you where it showed the call center for each schedule item. I combine those into each each group subgroup here that I'm looking for. <coughs> so that's the basic crux of it. Uh, like I said, the API you can use dashboards to look at that. Uh, we don't currently use anything to, to, to use with the employee a piece of that. Uh, certainly there are things, and I'm sure you guys have come with all kinds of ideas on how you could use that, you know, for an employee, for instance, to, when they log in, uh, maybe to your inter, inter, intranet or something like that, to click on something that says, hey, show me uh, you know, my schedule for the next week. That could show that to them and maybe some other uh, portal that you already have established without them having to quote log in to Ebro it would show them based on those, those get statements from the uh, uh, employee schedule, their item set up for the next few days. Uh, the database copies there again, it's very convenient for folks that have, you know, crystal folks on staff that can uh, write that if there's things you want to query from that standpoint to uh, integrate with, uh, you know, other systems. Uh, you might have any questions about how how those work or what you might could do with them and so forth. One of the things I'm, I did want to show you all actually a couple of examples of the uh, the live uh, feed here. So this is. Uh, All right, so this is refresh. This is a uh, date range of uh, 214 to 219.
it there again, you can see how you've got, this is a dispatch qualification ship. The duration is 12.18 hours. This is the call center. This is the start time, this is the end time. So, and so forth and so on. So there's many of these iterations as there are for this particular date range. So there's a bunch of that stuff. From a program standpoint, of course, it, it, roll, it rolls through that in, in a split second. The other thing you can do is you can add, actually add an employee ID to the end of this to where you're only looking at, uh, let's see. Nope. Let's see, 500 to, I put in a specific employee ID number and it's giving me all the shifts, all the scheduled items of this person through those two day ranges. So I think it was the 14th and the 19th. So there again, it's showing their, in this case, uh, for schedules that have already passed, of course, it's going to show you what you fixed through the discrepancies and give you, you know, actual start time and time. For ones that are in the future, they haven't worked yet or haven't, you know, discrepancies haven't been adjusted it'll show you their scheduled times. So there again, uh, you can do it either by day or look at the whole date range, or you can look at specific employees uh, and, uh, and pull just specific employees schedule out. Well. <coughs> what we're hoping to do, uh, I can show you an employee record, uh, fact, but I don't really want to put anybody's info up there. I had a slide that had the information. There's about what seven pieces of information of the employee when you do the get employee. There's the, the home call center, seems like the pager cell phone number, 